Today we're making some snowy winter wonderland crafts. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Alright, so the first project is a quilt frame wreath. We're going to use some pipe cleaners. This $3 sign from the Dollar Tree Plus. You can use any one you like. This is 24 inches. A roll of burlap and a quilting hoop. It's huge. It's bigger than the sign. We're going to be able to work with it anyway. So we're going to start off by putting our pipe cleaners down because this is what it's going to hold our deco mesh or burlap roll or whatever you have. And I'm placing these about seven inches apart with a total of ten all the way around. So you can just use your ruler and just measure off so that you have them equally all the way around because you want your poofs to be the same size. We're going to be making little poofs so I'm going to start by just kind of squishing in the ends and putting it down wherever you want to start. It doesn't really matter. You can do the sides or you can start on the top or bottom. You want to squish it down in there, give it a few tight twists, and then you can move that frame and your roll whichever direction you need to move it in to uh, make it easier for you to work with it. I'm right-handed, so going this direction seems to help me. We're going to make 12-inch poofs, so you're just going to grab your edges, kind of make those little edges go under a little bit, and then walk your fingers toward each other to make the little poof. Then you're going to push it up into the very next pipe cleaner that is on your, we're just going to call it a wreath form. Okay, we're going to do the same thing again. So we're going to take the ruler, going to go 12 inches. I'm using my thumb there to hold my place. Then I'm going to walk it straight across to the center and make sure that my edges are under. You can use your hand to kind of cup those under also. Go into the little next one, and you're going to press it down all the way to the frame and twist it nice and tightly. I have never had a... Well, not that I can remember anyway, a, a pipe cleaner to break on me. The ones I've gotten at the thrift store, the ones I've gotten at Dollar Tree, I haven't had a problem. So, whichever way you want to do this is fine. If you would prefer to use something like a um, zip tie, you can certainly do it that way. But when you're adding to it, you're going to need a pipe cleaner anyway, so you may as well just go there with the pipe cleaners. So, I got all the way around to the end. Thankfully, I had enough for this. And then I'm going to twist it around and then poof it up a little bit. I have a little extra of a tail here in the beginning. I couldn't decide what I wanted to do with it, so I left it. For now, I'm just going to kind of cup these under and make sure that I have enough. This is a sort of a wreath that I did on the fly. This is something that I have never done before with a form this big and in this way. So, you know, some people may like it, some may not. Moving on to the deco mesh. You can get your deco mesh wherever you like. These are seven inch rolls. I have a light blue and a kind of an off white color. I didn't have any solid white except for some that had some silver stripes and it was in horrible condition. So I'm gonna just put this out on my mat and I'm gonna measure 10 inches. And then using my rotary cutter, I'm just gonna go up and cut 10 inches. I just stacked them on top of each other to make it quicker. You are going to need 20 of the blue and 10 of the white okay so whichever way you want to cut it which you know one at a time if you want however you want to do it so we have two blues and one cream or white and we're just going to do this very simple method this wreath is going to be super easy for y'all you're just going to roll this up roll 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 there you have a little curl right there going to use a clamp to hold it and these i got from the dollar tree going to start on the next blue one going to roll it. They kind of tend to roll upon themselves anyway, so this is really easy to do. We're going to X them over and hold it with a clamp. And then the last one of, the, of this little bundle is going to be the white. I'm going to put it right in the middle of the top. So you got three different colors there. You want to be sure that you do enough of these to go all the way around your wreath. So we have 10 pipe cleaners. We're going to need 10 bundles. And each bundle has two blue and one white. Okay, I think we all got that by now. Just showing you again, in case you didn't catch it, how you roll this. 
and you can do them one at a time. You don't have to use the clamp if you don't have clamps. You could use clothes pins here. You could use um, just do one bundle at a time if you can hold it in your hands that way. If you're, you know, you have good dexterity, you can just do it all on your hand and put it right down on your wreath. But I made my bundles first. So once you have those all ready, you can start adding these little bundles. My idea here was for the blue and white, for one thing, they match the sign. And also, I wanted to just sort of make these look like a little starburst or a little snowflake idea when I put them down. Ideally, you would want to use a longer deco mesh because that burlap that is underneath is so wide. So you'd want it to be something bigger. But I thought that this would be cute and look like little snowflakes when you twist them up. I don't know. Kind of an abstract snowflake. And I'm just going to place those in all the way around. Get them nice and tight. And you see I was really, you know, pulling on that and it did not break. Be sure that you've got a couple of good twists in there before you trim off your edges. You are going to want to take your edges off. Um, well, I say edges, I mean the extra little pieces. See there, I trimmed down that burlap. It just kind of tucks in there and you don't really notice it. Well, then you can use your wire cutters or your whatever type of um, shears you have that you use for cutting your wires and just cut off all the way down almost to the little twist but not through the twist or it will pop off come undone you got to start over so just be careful where you're placing these put your glasses on ladies put your glasses on get your magnifier out i had my magnifying glasses on i'm not even going to joke about it i had them on they're really good for crafting. They help me a lot, especially with detail work. So you see that this leaner or the sign here is, it looks like it fits, but it doesn't. It's actually too small, but we're going to extend the form by using some of these large craft sticks. Not sure where mine came from, but I'm pretty sure you can get them at Dollar Tree in the crafter square section. I'm going to use one on each end on the back of the sign and just using some hot glue, I'm going to place these down and give it a chance for that to cool before I start fooling with it. And then when you flip it over and put it on the back, a little hot glue under it, a little hot glue over it, and then I'm just going to take a little piece of scrap cardboard to go across where they join together and do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to put that glue down, press it in, and be sure you have this centered. You know, if you've got to look at it and then flip it over and do it, do it that way. Flip it back and forth until it is centered. Okay, so now we have this secured and you won't be able to see this because it's behind the poofs. Trim off the excess. You don't need them and they just really get in the way. We want this to look as neat as possible. And if you normally paint the back of your stuff, you can go ahead and paint it. But you see, that works perfectly and it holds that sign or that leaner up perfectly in the back. So as I was beginning to fluff, I realized I really didn't like the leaf or the leaf wreath, whatever, that was in the center. And I thought, we can do better. How about a snowflake? So any snowflake ornament you have, and Dollar Tree probably still has some left, go ahead and use that. But I had this really pretty one that I thrifted that came from Dillard's. So pretty. I'm just going to since this was an ornament, I'm just going to cover up the hole with a little bit of masking tape and then fill it in with some of that putty. You can let that dry if you're going to paint it, but otherwise, you know, I still worked with it while it was wet. I'm going to add some hot glue to the back and position this down between the N and the W. And then I can press it down. All right, so the little brads on here are like a gold, bronzy looking color. Really didn't match my theme, so I just took my silver paint pen and went right over the top of them. And now they coordinate. I did the top and the bottom, so they all look nice together. And this is very simple, that's it. All right, a frosty topper is going to be the next one. This came from the thrift store. I thought he was cute. There were a bunch of them. I think it was like a little um, solar light or some type of little light for outside, but it's in terrible shape. So I'm going to go ahead and take my white um, semi-gloss Rust-Oleum and spray paint most of his face. A little bit got other places, but that's okay. And I got a little bit of this putty. 
See, when I spray painted it, I noticed the little damage that was on the nose and on the scarf. So I decided to, you know, not just ditch the whole project. I thought, well, let me just go ahead and try because sometimes we have things with cracks and, and problems and we can work with them and getting, you know, where you can barely see, you can really fix it. I could have used some modeling clay, I think, here too, but this worked fine. And I'll give you a closer look of it um, once I get done thinning that out. Don't want any chunky spots. And I'm trying to go along with the regular contour of this, I guess this would be like a little carrot nose. And it worked out fine for that. However, I tried it on those cracks on the scarf, not so much, they're way too big. So I just left them. I have some wicker white paint that I'm going to use to paint Frosty. Now, uh, I don't recommend you use a paintbrush unless that's all you have because it is streaky and it would probably take a thousand coats to get the streaks out. Or I guess you could use chalk paint, but I wanted something that's a little bit shinier because I want it to look like snow, right? So I'm sorry that I'm a little bit out of your view in some of these shots, but I just decided to use the same technique that I've used on some other things and just use a little a little dauber here, just a little stencil, stencil brush, foam brush, whatever, and just kind of dot into it, offload a little bit, and just dot it all over. And to be honest with you, I like the texture so much better. It's so more realistic and, you know, if I can imagine what snow would look like, you know, I live in South Alabama, so in my mind, it has a texture, like a sandy type texture. I mean, the look of it, right? So I wanted it to have that same look. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with the top of his hat and all around the bottoms of his hat. I'm just gonna use a different sponge, go all over it with this pavement um, color. It's a, almost black. So once it dries, this is how it will look. Then I'm gonna go over his nose with some orange. I believe this is harvest orange or pumpkin orange, something like that. And then I'm just gonna take a smaller brush and start painting his nose. Y'all, please don't be intimidated by painting stuff. It's really put, like I said, I've got to have my magnifiers on or I cannot do this. I have to steady my wrist, steady my hand, and then knowing whether to move your hand or your fingers or your arm to paint to keep it steady. You just have to practice. And by no means am I perfect. I do not even claim to be. But I did do two coats on that nose to make it look opaque, and it was fine that way. I didn't have to uh, daub that on there. And then I'm taking some black buttons for his eyes because I like the texture. I think it looks a little more realistic. I'm gonna give him some button eyes and a little carrot nose, and I'm just gonna leave his mouth just like it is, almost as if you took your finger and just pushed in there to make his little smile. I like it that way, but you can certainly do yours any way you like. Now I'm gonna work on his earmuffs. So I've got some navy blue paint and it matches the yarn that I want to use. So I'm just gonna go over with a flat brush at first. I know y'all know how to paint, but for those of y'all who are new to crafting, and I know I've had several people tell me that they're new to crafting, I just wanna give you tips here and there. And I know that the ones of you who are more advanced are very patient and kind and understanding because we all start somewhere, right? So the smaller brushes to go around the edges and I'm just trying to balance my hand to make sure that I get a nice straight line. Now it is not perfect because it's hand painted. I can't do it perfectly. But I'm gonna do two coats, one on each side and allow it to dry. There are his earmuffs and his nose and eyes are done. His hat is almost done. Now we're gonna make a scarf for him. So I guess it was a happy accident that the scarf had a crack in it that I couldn't fix. I'm going to use some of this yarn that I picked up at the thrift store. It's really kind of cool. I just thought it was like a ribbon type yarn, but it's not. It's like a mesh and it opens up. It's really cool. So I'm just going to start by finding, I left a little tail down and then glued it on around his neck. And then I'll just go around with my hot glue and just tack that down trying to get my fingers protected here because stuff like yarn and mesh and fabrics you can really feel that glue through i don't want to ruin my fingertips nope my nails are already in terrible shape by the way if you ladies do nails or you're new to nails 
please don't use super glue on your nails to put false nails down. I did that in October and my nails have still not recovered. They look terrible. Oh, they're so terrible looking. Okay, so we're gonna continue to wrap around and I'm gonna cover that up. I don't want that to be seen. It's so bulky there though that I didn't want to end it with a knot on top of that spot. I just feel like it wouldn't be natural looking. It would just be way too bulky. So I decided to slide it to the other side of where that plastic knot is and go ahead and tie a knot on the other side of it. This will make it look a little more flat and kind of disguise the fact that there's something broken underneath. I'm just gonna trim off this little scarf. So if you don't have this, you could use any type of yarn. You could use strips of fabric. You could use ribbon, whatever you would like to use. I'm gonna move that knot up so he can still sit flat and just glue it down. Then using some more buttons, I mean, why not? I had the jar out anyway. I'm gonna give him some embellishments. So I'm gonna take some white, a big white button with a blue, I don't know, it's like a snowflake, I guess, looking button in the middle that matches perfectly to the fabric. And we're gonna put something on top of that that is white so the blue will help it show through. Now we're gonna work on his hat. He needs a hat band. So I have thrifted some of this stuff. There, it's stretchy, some type of a trim, but I know that you can get the ribbon similar to this at the Dollar Tree. So if you're looking for something like that, check out the Dollar Tree. And I'm not sponsored by Dollar Tree, by the way. I don't think anybody is, but you know. When you love something and you wanna share it with other people, you just do it. Okay, same process with this button. I'm gonna just layer the blue one on top of the white one. Then I'm gonna put it right up here on this hat band. Isn't that cute? So now, if I put my white on there, my little snowflake, you can definitely see all the little details through the blue in the back. I love that. I love all the texture and the dimension in this project. I think he's so cute. He's so much better. I, I should have thought to do a side by side, but I didn't. Just, you know, take my word for it. You can remember what it looked like, right? Now I'm just fluffing his scarf out. Now what in the world would you do with him? Well, you can use him as a jar topper, most certainly. You could put him on your Christmas tree if you're still doing Christmas. You could put him on a jar, glue him on the top of one of these Dollar Tree jars. That would work. Check that out. Mm -hmm. Or you could use him as a tiered tray topper. This is a little one that came from Target and you see how easy that sits on the top? Wouldn't that be precious at a cocoa bar? Yes. So the next project is going to be a snow ski hanger. I'm going to take some leftover picks. I love these and I grab them anytime I see them at Goodwill, especially the good quality. And this one came from Dollar Tree. It's just a uh, snowy willow, a little piece of foam, some jute, and then our skis. They have little hangers on the back. You could use it as a leaner though if you wanted to. So start off with your foam. I'm just gonna press this down on here and it's gonna give me the little troughs. Look how nice that holds on, but we're not gonna trust it. We're gonna add some glue right down in those little tracks that we just got, that we made. And then I'm gonna place it right back down where it was. Hold it there for a minute until it stops cracking and popping. And then, to secure it even more so, because you know how glue and foam are. I'm just going to wrap it around the middle. I'm gonna twist it and wrap it around the other side and then tie it in the middle. I want the foam on here because it's so much easier to work with florals if you have foam to put them in rather than just gluing them flat down on a surface. I'm gonna cut up these little willow picks and I'm gonna cut them into even smaller pieces too. And then I'm gonna start figuring out how I want these to lay and if they're going to be too big. I don't wanna completely cover up my skis. I want them to be seen somewhat. So I'm just going to pull at my little branches here, trim off what I don't need, and then figure out how I wanna place them. And I pulled one off of that one too. You can cut down your picks so that they are the right length 
and you don't have them sticking all out of your foam and you don't want your foam to break in half so you know puncture it where you have to all right so I decided rather than doing it at a slant I would do one in the top and one in the bottom and then um, work our way around I'm just going right beside that that piece of jute cord I'm fluffing it out a little bit because if you don't use glue you can always move it if you don't like it I'm going to take some of the little pieces that I pulled off of the branches and just place those back down that one doesn't have quite enough snow on it but we'll cover it up so you can get the idea of the shape then just start cutting those picks down. They are on wire and they're plastic. Just be sure that you're trying to push the wire part into your foam instead of the plastic because it will just bend and it's not going to want to go in there for you. I just look at it from all around and decide where I want more pieces to be and just kind of space them out. You know, you go by feel with some of this stuff. You just... Sometimes I forget the camera's there and I just keep putting stuff in and moving stuff around and some people say I do too much, but you know, I think that's what's unique and individual to people. You do as much as you like and stop when you want to stop. Add more if you want to add more. So these flowers here, I want to add at an angle. They just look like little snowy pieces to me, so I decided it would be okay to go ahead and use those. I'm going to move these pieces around so that I can see I can see all the pieces of my skis underneath and the poles that are underneath. And you can use little bits of hot glue if you need to to glue your stuff down. Rather than using a, an ornament, I decided to use this plaque, which still I think is an ornament actually, that I got at the thrift store. It's metal on the top, the little snowflakes, so I'm just going to bend them out a little bit, that top white layer, to give it a little more dimension. You can see that it's bowed. I guess maybe that's why somebody got rid of it, but it's perfect for what I'm doing. So I'm gonna add a good bit of hot glue and go right over my foam block. And that will be the center. I'm gonna hold it for a minute, because again, we want that glue to hang on to it. And this is how it's gonna look. These are the three snowy winter wonderland projects for today. Flashing lights, so if that bothers you, don't look for a minute. I did not realize that the lights that I used in my new photo area, they look like they're not moving until you record them, and then you can see them flashing. Super weird and annoying, because now I have to rewire it. But oh well, we do what we have to do around here, don't we? That's right, and I want y'all to be comfortable. So here's that snowy wreath. Very simple. I did not go overboard on this wreath. You can add some picks to it. You can add snowflakes in there. You can add more ribbon, whatever you would like. And then here are the skis with all of our snowy greenery. And of course, we have Frosty over here. I want to thank y'all for all the patience that you've had with me as I've been working through trying to get my videos uploaded. I hope that this one will post for y'all. I miss you so much. I miss comments and talking and oh, I miss you guys. We got to start off 2023 on a better foot because it is ending 2022 in a very strange way. But again, thank you so much for being here. Thanks to all my subscribers and viewers for every bit of what you do to bring support and encouragement to my channel. If you're new, I would love for you to stick around. And thank you so much for stopping by. I'll see you again soon. Bye.